thanks for joining today. I know it's a late session, so and we've been here already for today, so you're probably very tired. I hope this is fun and that you enjoy the presentation as much as I did preparing it. So well, maybe I want to know who's a player of Scardio Bali. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Uh, who is the community organizer or wants to get start organizing communities? You, great, great also. So maybe I'll start with a quick introduction for the people that do not know what Stardew Valley is. <laughs> it's a great game that got released in 2016 and it was a huge success during COVID, especially, I guess we were all home. So it was like, it gave us a sense of community because the game is especially good for that. There is a, a nice community behind it, so it's great to play. And it gives you a sense of being with other people, even if, if not people. <laughs> and the idea is that you inherit a farm from your grandfather, and it's run down, so you have to rebuild it. You have to rebuild the community center that's in the game as well. So it's, it's really fun to play, and I uh, really enjoyed it. So some of you seems you did as well, and that's why some people are here probably. <laughs> And I hope this also can help us to be an analogy as how to help build your communities. So this is a little bit about me. <laughs> if you want to use this uh, profile maker, it's very nice. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I work at Grafana Labs. I'm a developer advocate. Um, uh, mostly I'm passionate about building communities and I organize quite a few communities in Barcelona. I co-organize them, of course. Uh, Software Crafters Barcelona, Cloud Native, I'm a Grafana, of course. So I'm really, uh, uh, I really like uh, building communities and helping people connect with each other. So uh, this is one thing that I like doing. Uh, another fun fact about me, apart from that I'm a Bruce Springsteen fan, is that I'm actually a farm girl. I was born in this farmhouse <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So the game for me is very realistic. I used to milk goats. Uh, I know how to plant potatoes and harvest them. So for me, when I play the game, I find that's very realistic sometimes. <laughs> so if you want to know, well, that's, that's my farmhouse. <laughs> so what we're going to see in this session is a little bit of a story about uh, Cloud Native Barcelona, our farm that we have to rebuild. Um, some lessons that we learned while rebuilding the farmhouse. Um, what we plan to do for the next seasons, because you know that uh, it's good to plan when you're playing Stardew Valley for the next seasons. And finally, there's a Q&A with some surprises. We have Stardew stickers and some flying chickens that I'll give to the people who ask questions. <laughs> uh, so start with the story of the farm. So actually the story started here at KubeCon in Amsterdam last year. I was at this talk. Uh, this panel was very interesting with Kim, Lisa, Bart, and Sharon. They were uh, talking about how they built, uh, how they were building the communities after the pandemic, and what were the difficult points. I also discovered that Kubernetes Community Days existed, so I got very interested also in organizing uh, Community Kubernetes Day. Uh, so I, I left here thinking, oh, this is are very interesting things. Uh, I knew that we had rebuilt our software crafters Barcelona community and when I was thinking what's the community that I liked before the pandemic that it's now dormant, it was cloud native, the Kubernetes one that we had in Barcelona and I knew the organizer so when I went back home I went to the, <laughs> to the saloon, <laughs> I, I went with Dimitris Kapanidis, he was the Kubernetes organizer before the pandemic and he still had a big meetup with 900 people. But it was dormant until there was no talk since 2019 and we thought it's time to restart. And also Pablo Chathin from Grafana, he joined us and we were discussing for a few hours and a few beers. And we decided, yeah, it's about time we restart the community. We think we might be able to. And we were also discussing, we always wanted to organize a, some kind of event, like a Kubernetes Community Day that we didn't know existed annually in Barcelona, but we wanted to know if the community really wanted that. So we said, let's start organizing regular meetups. And if we see that the community comes back, then we'll decide if we do a Kubernetes community day. The other thing is that there was, like in Stardew Valley, you know, there are the elder people that it's good to talk to them. <laughs> so they always give you good hints. 
So we knew that there was another community, a cloud native Barcelona. There were actually two communities, one in Meetup and one in, in the CNCF community side. So we decided to reach out to Rael, who was the one that was leading this community that was also dormant, to merge the both communities so we would not leave anyone behind. So what we done is that we merge the communities. The next thing was how do we relaunch our cloud native uh, community? So we decided to organize a nice event, like in the, in the style of Stardew Valley, <laughs> in the Egg Festival. Stardew Valley has a lot of special events in the calendar. That's where the community gathers. So we thought we need to find something that is a special event to get the people interested and see if they show up. And we were very lucky because uh, my colleague, Nico, Nikki Manoredakis, joined Grafana, and she was in the TAC Environment Sustainability. And she was actually planning to, for the Cloud Sustainability Week that they were planning to do to raise awareness on sustainability issues. They wanted to do local meetups. So they, wanted, they were looking at having one in Barcelona. We thought this looks like a very nice event that will attract speakers and new, and new, and new members to the community. So we actually got a very nice uh, event in October last year with uh, six speakers doing lightning talks and we saw that there was interest in the community. So we decided to continue organizing. So where we are now is we organize meetups every two months. Uh, we have the meetup site and we have uh, the cloud native uh, site. So we have not lost all the members that we had in both sites. In the, in the meetup site, we had like 900 and now we are over 1000. And in the, in the baby side, in the cloud native side, we still we have like doubled the members that we had there. And we were also even able to organize a KCD. So now in June, we will be we are very lucky that we will be able to have an in-person KCD in Barcelona. So that's uh, we think that our community is, is back thanks to all this, and we'll continue doing that if we can. Every two months, organize a meetup and try to have an annual event so we can gather the community. So to the lessons learned from this, the first for me is that community matters, that you should not do this alone, because it's, it's fun organizing meetups with other people, doing it yourself, it's more difficult. I always say if, if you want to do something fast, yes, you can do it on your own, but it's not going to be sustainable and it's not going to be fun. So if you want the meetup to survive and to exist uh, years after now, you should gather a, a big group of organizers. If you know Stardew Valley, there is a community center that you have to rebuild. So uh, if you, you can rebuild it yourself, it's more difficult. But if you count on the community that's in the valley, it's easier to, to rebuild the community center. So in a similar way, if you have more people, it is easier. So this is the uh, current list of organizers. Some of them are here. <laughs> uh, why we actually need a lot of organizers? Apart because it's fun if there's more people. <laughs> um, that's, that's, you know, if you organize meetups, that it's uh, events, it's, it's a little bit difficult to find hosts, to find speakers. Sometimes you cannot go to the event, you need someone, someone else to go. So all these people help in different ways. For example, Dimitris was the one that gave us access to the Kubernetes meetup. Uh, Nikki was the one <laughs> that brought us the first event. <laughs> And Rael and Ro, for example, organized the meetup in November because Rael works at Red Hat. And he said, let's organize it in our office because it's easier if or you have someone in the organization already working at an office. You can easy, more easily ask, can you give me the office for a meetup? And Ro was the other one that gave us a talk because also it's very difficult to find speakers when you start because uh, you need to show that you can organize the meetups. But it's easier if, some, if you have a lot of people in the organization, it's easier that someone jumps in and helps you find a host, helps you find speakers. So I do recommend, if you can, to have uh, as big an organization as you can. And then for KCD, we also have a big organization. <laughs> uh, for example, Almudena, she was the one that introduced me to Jorge, who is here. <laughs> And Jorge did one of our meetups on his own. He doesn't live in Barcelona, but he offered to come to Barcelona to speak at a meetup. He offered their office to host the meetup, and he even found other speakers. So sometimes you get gifts, so accept the gifts. <laughs> they make it your life easier. And after that, well, the other speakers uh, have volunteers, so it's, uh, it's something that it really helps you get things started 
if you have a lot of people in the organization. For example, Jose the other, the other week, I was out sick and I could not go to the, I went to the meetup, but I was not up for speaking, presenting, setting up with the host, cleaning up. So Jose took care of that. So having a lot of people in the organization will really, apart from having fun, will help a lot. The other thing that we do and I recommend is have your own recipe. Meetups are very local. So uh, try, you know, in, in Stardew Valley, you get these recipes on how to do things. You have the ingredients, but sometimes you have to adjust them to locally. For example, in Barcelona, we tend to organize meetups from Tuesday to Thursday. It has to be better at se uh, uh, late in the afternoon, if you can. Some uh, locations are better than others. So if, if you write down everything, this is a, a checklist of what we do to organize a meetup. That's in here. So the, this, uh, if you write down what you do, it's, it's easier for other people in the meetup to actually help you out. So for example, for us, uh, usually a meetup starts with finding a host, or if you find a host that can host you on a concrete date, but you don't have speakers, you can ask the host if they, can, they have speakers in their teams and can share something. So you have a date and maybe you have a speaker. Then you, for a meetup, usually you have two speakers, so then you can start looking for other speakers. If you don't find them in the community, because we have a very big organizing team, someone will volunteer <laughs> if they don't find anyone in the contacts. So it helps a lot. And the other way usually is if you have a speaker that offers to speak at a certain day, that you need to find offices that can host you. For us in Barcelona, because there's a lot of offices doing meetups, what we do is we visit other meetups. If we like the office, we network uh, in that meetup <laughs> and try to <laughs> get them to host the next meetup that you, <laughs> that you need hosting for. So once you've done that for a while, you have a lot, a big list of hosts. So it makes it easier once you, you keep doing it, they know you and it's easier to continue doing it. And then what we do is also, of course, plan for, for the next season. I mean, like in Stardew Valley, you know, you have different seasons. And for example, in winter, you don't usually harvest anything. So you prepare, it's time to upgrade your tools or to do other things that you cannot do in, in the winter in a farm. So same with meetups. Uh, for example, for us, the summer is two months that we don't usually do meetups in Barcelona. So those, those two months are very good for you to do a retrospective, to plan the dates for the next year, to try to, to start finding hosts for those days. So if you plan in advance, that helps a lot. So you decide which are the events that you want to have. So make a calendar and then we, we start working on that. So, it's good to know your seasons, when, when meetups work, when they don't work, but that's very local, as I said, usually meetups are very local. And the other thing we do a lot, like when you plant crops in, in Stardew Valley, is knowing when, how long it takes for them to, to grow. The same with the meetup, at first we started organizing meetups, maybe we were two or three weeks before the meetup, and that was very stressful. So now what we try to do is organize like three months in advance. So then it's not as stressful because we already have a host, we already have speakers, and it's a little bit more relaxed. So for example, now we did a meetup last week and we already have a secured host and speakers for the next meetup in May. So now until September, we don't have to do a lot. So it's more also more sustainable for you to do that, if you can. So what uh, do we plan for the next seasons? Um, the first thing, you know, the Stardew Valley has a, a mode where you can play on your own, have your own farm, you, you harbor your crops, you do whatever you want on your own. But they introduced the co-op mode where you can play with its multiplayer, so you can play with other real players in the same farm. So this is a little bit what we'll do with our meetups. For us, what it means, is do joint events with other meetups in Barcelona. It helps us uh, broaden the community. We will reach out to other communities. For example, we're thinking on some affinity meetups like the Free Software Barcelona or the Grafana one. So meetups that make sense to do an event together, we can try to organize that. And then it's, it's easier because we collaborate. Maybe they have hosts, maybe but they already have speakers as well. So if we organize events together, I think we can make this more sustainable. And it's also nice for the communities to work together. And the other thing we notice, I think probably everyone has noticed that Klaus Native is not as diverse as we'd like it to be. 
So in Barcelona, we see the same. So we'll try to work a lot on that. Like you have this uh, diverse study Valley mod where you can make your community more diverse and give voices to other people. We'll try to do that. This is a talk that really inspired me a lot from Leanne. Um, some of the things that she says, how to build better communities, we already implemented, like having a code of conduct and making it very explicit. And we'll try to work also on, on getting underrepresented groups to speak. So I do recommend, if you haven't seen it, that you have a look at, at this talk. And I think that's it. <laughs> it was very fast. <laughs> Um, this is what we've seen, uh, community matters, so don't do it alone, especially. Uh, work on your, on your own meetup recipe, plan your meetup seasons ahead, and yeah, multiplayer mode for the future, that's what we want to do, and work on having a more diverse community. So now for the Q&A, we have some time, and as I said, <laughs> I will give some chickens, flying chickens. <laughs> oh, lots of questions. Good, good. There is a mic around, or I think. Okay, so I jump on the mic. I will take the first. Uh, thank you for sharing your experience. I have maybe two questions for you because I experienced that in the past. I tried to build a community and I failed for two reasons. First, a lack of commitment in people that wanted to organize. And second, we lose a place in terms of, yes, we were super eager to organize our first meetup and then the second one happened never, ever, because we lose kind of a momentum. So do you have some advice for me, maybe? Yeah, which, which chicken do you want? <laughs> if you want any. <laughs> oh, yeah, a blue one, please. Blue one. <laughs> so the blue one for you. <laughs> ah, didn't get Thank that. you. <laughs> So very good question, thanks. Uh, first one was, uh, for me, it is difficult indeed, but I find that having so many people in the organization, it makes it easier. Because if you're two people, the meetup before was two main leaders of the, of the meetups, and one of them stopped, so the other one, Dimitri, said, I don't want to do it on my own. And we met him at the bar, and we were talking to him, said, I'm willing to restart, but I don't want to do this with two people. I want to do it with a lot of people. Because then people come and go, Maybe there's three months that you're very busy, but other people can take over for you. So for me, the first recommendation is try to find enough people that want to, to join. Yep. For us, we started with eight people and now we are nine. So one of the teammates, Christian, joined later and he actually found us the, where he was working. He found a host, he found speakers. So be open also when you go to the meetups to... Make it uh, very open that, hey, we accept people in the, in the organization. We actually want more people. And some people show up for that. Of course, some people will disappear. But if you have enough, maybe, I don't know how many people you were when you organized. Three. Yeah, maybe that's, if you couldn't be five, six, maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. And the other question was? Was about the pace for the organization of Meetup because we are super eager to organize the first one. It went quite well, but we lose the audience because the second one never showed up. Yeah, what we do that with other communities I have is try to stick to a calendar from the beginning. Like, yeah, we want to do every two months. And what we did in this case, because the second Meetup, we didn't have a host, we didn't have speakers. And one in the organization said, Rael said, okay, I will put the office, I will put one speaker, let's find another one. So try to do it between the organization, mm -hmm. try to find someone or reach to other communities. I have a lot of people reaching out to me when they don't find a host because we, I organize other communities and we have a list of hosts already because we've been doing it for seven years. Mm -hmm. So then you have a lot of hosts. Yep. Reach out to other people and say, hey, I'm, I really need a host. Uh, can you give me a contact with one? And if they do the introduction for you, then it's very easy that they, they will help out. So usually what I do when they ask me is send an email saying, hey, this is an organizer of another community. Can you host their event? Because sometimes it's the problem is you don't find a host, you don't find a speaker, and it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And if you ask the company that's hosting for a speaker, sometimes they are willing to have a speaker. Okay. So it's very easy then if you can do that. But yeah. probably there's no... <laughs> Thank you. Better way. So who else? Questions? How does KCD Barcelona feel about international speakers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, KC Barcelona is co-located uh, this year with uh, Debbicien, so we accept uh, international speakers. It's going to be English and Spanish. The problem is usually we cannot pay for speakers to travel, so uh, that's, for me that's an unfair situation sometimes, because sometimes we can only accept false that their company will pay for the traveling. But in this case, if the company fails for, pays for traveling, we accept uh, speakers for sure from anywhere. Awesome, thank you. I wanted to ask if you had any sort of tips on how to encourage regular attendees to move into leadership roles like so that you can continue to grow the group, like the organizing group. For me, I guess what we try to do and is when we, we use the networking part of the meetup a lot and we try to recognize frequent flyers. So the frequent flyers are the ones that maybe they don't want to belong to the organization in the beginning, but they say, hey, maybe my company could host you. I said, okay, let's start with hosting. <laughs> and then if they like the team, because we, well, we try to meet from time to time if we can, so having some in-person gatherings helps. If it's not in the meetup in between, that might help. But yeah, there's no... I so like, like adding a personal touch to it, like recognizing who is there and maybe speaking to them directly yep. in addition to or separately from a general call the for... The general call doesn't work even for speakers. We, do, we have a forum for speakers. We never get a single talk in there. <laughs> you have to reach out. And we like always through, share the QR in the meetups. We do everything. But what really works is that the meetups say, hey, where do you work? Oh, I work here. What do you do? Oh, have you shared what you do in the company? No. And then, oh, why don't you? And then, but yeah, it takes some time, especially if it's the first time someone comes, they might not be really open to that. But yeah, for us, at least in Spain, it's a lot of uh, personal contact and saying, hey, this is good for your career as well. You can start sharing a meetup. It's a very safe place where you can do your first talk. So I usually try to promote that saying, hey, this is a safe space. You can try your talk. You can improve your talk and then you can apply to a conference with that. Also because sometimes they are recorded, it's something that you can show that you have already spoken at the conference. So we, we try to share all this with speakers, depending on where you see they are not so willing to do that and say, hey, <laughs> depending on the person, it's like, hey, maybe for your career is good, maybe, hey, you haven't done a talk yet, we can help you out. So trying to be like, hey, convince them, hey, this is a safe space, sometimes it's 20, 30 people, it's not very scary. It's very casual, so it's a, it's a place where you can actually fail, it's not a problem. And, and they like the feedback, so say, hey, you'll get feedback from your talk and it's good for you. So that we try to yeah, be very personal with specifically target people, because if you say, in general, please, do you want to speak to everyone? It's like, no, 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 not me. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Which one do you want? <laughs> okay. Hello there. Um, Hello. I have a question, well, like two questions, if you can share some practical tips or just something from your experience. Uh, one would be more general, the other one is a little more specific. The, Go ahead. <laughs> the more general, the first one would be, how do you keep attendees or like in general your community continuously engaged and contributing? Like not only the organizers, but like people that are there, not only in like the consumer mode, but <laughs> actually wanting to give something to the community. You have to assume that not, not everyone will come back first. So maybe half of the people come once and say, oh, that's not for me. <laughs> or they are busy or whatever. So I guess it comes again with uh, being, I mean, when you see people that keep coming back, trying to build this, uh, when you do the networking part, try to be, uh, talk to them, introduce them to other people, connect them with other people, so they see hey, there is value to come into this meetup because I was, I needed this, this question answered and they, and they point me to the person that can answer that. So try to listen to people and what they need, where they are here for, why, what they want and try to connect them because the community is also about connection. So if, if you know, start knowing your community, for me, it's uh, trying to point them to the right direction uh, so they feel included, they feel they are included in the conversations. Good uh, catering and, and drinks also help. <laughs> so if, <laughs> we try not to have any meetup without uh, 
catering and refreshments. So otherwise, that's also a problem if you don't have. Because I know some some places it's difficult now to get that. So we try to ask our hosts, please provide us with uh, good pizzas, with whatever. Take care of the vegan people, vegetarian people. Be very mindful of the different people that are there, so they feel welcome and they will come next time for me, for me. We're not perfect doing that, but we have some frequent flyers that probably bring other people in, and that has helped to keep the community alive. The, also, the other thing is probably sometimes have some hype topics. <laughs> if you do a cross-plane talk or a carpenter talk or some, some topics, if you do in the meetup, you know that will bring people in. So it also depends on, on the f what's in fashion, <laughs> unfortunately. So that also helps us. And the more specific question would be, um, if you would have to start a community for an open source tool that absolutely nobody knows about by now, <laughs> but you want some kind of community to work together on that. How would you start that? Like, apart from, I like your idea with the affinity groups, like doing probably a meetup together with them, um, but do you have like any other idea how you would go about that? Uh, for me, I, I would try to find in my city who is using that, if you can. But, but like if actually like how do you go about the, the problem uh, that nobody knows about it so nobody uses no. it no if you go to other meetups yeah that's try to find out if by any chance other another meetup is doing a talk related to that but otherwise i think it is pretty difficult thing because if you cannot locate who likes that tool maybe you can organize the first meetup but then how do you advertise it if you have your uh, net if you have social accounts that that can help maybe spreading the word, but maybe you, you don't get enough people. I've never done that. I've been lucky because I've been in communities that were already big, like software crafters or cloud native. And Grafana is a new community that we started, but there's enough people in Barcelona that use Grafana. So we do not have that problem, but that's uh, an interesting question. <laughs> I don't think I have an answer to. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Um, yeah, my question is kind of similar. Uh, but I couldn't have known. <laughs> uh, it is like, how would you go about stopping being that lone farmer that you have to avoid being? Because in the game, it's a thing I absolutely love. You just walk up to someone and press A, Say hi. and suddenly you have a conversation. <laughs> that doesn't work in real life, sadly. And what I tend to do when I try to do community things is I uh, write something up on social media, get a bunch of likes and boosts, and then it goes nowhere because no one actually stays interacted or s keeps interacting with it. And uh, like, do you have any tips uh, for how to avoid that? That's a good question because I'm probably very old school. <laughs> so for me, social networks, I've used to promote the meetups after we do them. But uh, before I, I do prefer in-person connections. So maybe I'm lucky. What I did with Cloud Native, I started with my own company. I knew that some people would love to organize these meetups, and I got Pablo, we got Nikki, we got Ross, so we got some people that would join. So that was a start. And then, try, uh, for me, the only tip is uh, you need to start small and use your contacts. But for me, I use my personal contacts, people that know me, not from social networks, but in person, because also this is local. I mean, and for, because I go to a lot of meetups. I end up knowing a lot of people. <laughs> so probably it requires a lot of effort on your part to be known in person, in other meetups, finding people who are interested in the same things that you are, and then say, hey, shall we grab a coffee sometime? And then okay. say, hey, I'd like to organize this. What would you be interested? <laughs> Thank you. So. so first, uh, thank you very much for, for the talk. Um, so I wanted to know, in your experience running uh, meetups, uh, do you have you seen people either self-organize or, or perhaps through more structured environments? Do for to get new speakers to come, have you seen people mentoring other people or, or helping them support you, like new, newcomers and and how to get? Uh, well, I'll stop there. You got the question. <laughs> That's a good question. Also, <laughs> uh, we have a previous experience with Software Crafters Barcelona. It's an annual conference, but we also have meetups, and we wanted to have more diverse voices because people are not willing to speak. And what we did is a sort of workshops in a, in another meetup, Women Tech Makers in Barcelona, 
It was like a lot, four different workshops where we took the people that came there from losing a little bit the fear of public speaking to creating a call for papers for a conference to actually presenting it. So in four weeks, separated maybe in two months, we got some people to apply for the conference that were from different groups. What I plan to do, because that's one of the ideas that I didn't share, but next, next season I, I'll, I'll try to do that, but with meetups in Cloud Native. Try to organize with other groups. Uh, again, the work with other, uh, with other communities, not on your own only. And try to organize a series of meetups where we can bring people up from writing your own bio, deciding what can I speak about? Because m many people say, I, I don't have anything interesting to say. Yes, you do. <laughs> but we need to show them that they have interesting th things to do in a safe space where they feel they are with other people like them and they are not being judged by anyone. So I think that could help because it's helped in the past. So we'll try to do that. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but we'll offer them to speak at our meetup so they can build their confidence and then see if they continue and apply for conferences and things like that. Cool, thank you. But if anyone else has any ideas, I'm more than happy to. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. And uh, yeah, um, I have a question. Do you have like an online communication channel between uh, community members? Because, uh, yeah, we have a community and uh, I'm trying to convince the community uh, communication ladies to switch to a channel, different channel other than a Telegram group. So, yeah, do you have any suggestion or uh, what's your experience? Thanks for the question. Uh, we use the CNCF Slack channel that uh, we have there. CNCF Barcelona is the group channel for every member and then CNCF Barcelona Org is for the organization. But I don't think we do that a lot. Uh, we, we use Slacks to promote our, because there's some Slacks in the Barcelona community we know are very good if we promote our events there. So they are seen. So what we do is a lot of research. If you, if you go to my blog, you'll see that, that we research where we should publish our meetups so it gets to the right people. So we have, we have investigated a lot of where, what's the Slack channel that allows external events to publish. Because if you go to the CNCF channel, for example, in Barcelona, it's probably not, uh, there's not a lot of people there. So not a lot of people will see it. And to keep people engaged, uh, actually, I have a lot of people reaching out to us directly on Meetup. So they usually message you directly and say, hey, I'd like to do that or this, uh, this and that. So, but we don't have a channel where we all speak apart from when we do the meetups to be honest so but i i don't know what's what's your problem with that so maybe you can explain further <laughs> yeah like uh, we have a telegram group amongst like communities uh, members and i think it's a little bit uh, s sketchy i i don't know i i'm, I'm like a word here but uh, yeah is uh, your message or your um, your message will be drowned um, amongst others uh, messages so it's kind of hard to voice your opinions or your suggestion so yeah that's the one of the problem I see in my community yes I, I agree with you and we have discords we have telegrams but it's very difficult yeah to communicate the, like that in general so usually the community members actually reach out to us directly if they have suggestions or things like that but it's very difficult sometimes to speak in the open. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Thank you for a nice presentation. I'm also a community leader. And um, I want to ask you actually about the simplicity and volunteers. So when, when you want to keep it in low scale, it's easy to organize. You just need a volunteer to move pizzas or and stuff like that. But when you want to scale up, uh, take it a level further, things get complicated and the motivation recognition getting challenging. So what I mean is, uh, in my community, it's easy to find an engineer who can help with simple stuff. But when we need a UI designer for such nice slides or a front-end developer or a videographer or a lawyer, right, it's difficult to convince them to support us, a community non-profitly dedicate their time. Did you ever end up in this situation and how do you deal with it? How do you convince them to support your community when you need these kind of resources? Thank you. Thank you. For Cloud Native, we haven't needed yet. Uh, 
luckily for us. <laughs> but I, we do have a, an NGO for software crafters, Barcelona and other community uh, I'm in, a part of. Uh, we try to have a very diverse team of people. So for example, we have someone who's very good at design and he helps us. So having a lot of different people in the organization also leads you to bring more people in. So for me, the more diverse people you have, the more easy it's that they will bring different skills to the team. And luckily, as, again, luckily for us, people are not there for recognition. So just being in the website as organizers is enough and they are, they are happy with that. You can also give them badges like Gradley badges, things like that. But in our case, people seem very happy to volunteer. So we didn't have that problem yet. <laughs> Done? Okay, thank you very much for staying till the end. <laughs> Have a nice evening. <laughs>